Então, o compêndio da Lexia Divina é uma forma simples, prática e acessível de ter na tua mão o resumo de toda a oração de um ano litúrgico. Com esse livro, você não vai perder a tua oração. Você vai registrar dia após dia o conteúdo da tua oração. E a oração vai se transformar em vida, vai se transformar em decisões, em práticas concretas. Essa palavra é tão poderosa que um só versículo pode mudar toda a sua vida. E o que é a Lexio Divina? A Lexio Divina, como o nome diz, é uma leitura orante da Palavra de Deus. Cinco passos, muito simples, e a leitura é algo objetivo. O que é que esses textos falam hoje, concretamente? Lê com calma, lê tranquilamente, lê várias vezes essas três leituras. Depois da leitura você tem a meditação. Então a meditação é um movimento de entrar dentro de nós, onde Deus habita, no mais profundo de nós, e escutar o que é que Deus quer me falar a mim, naquilo que eu vivo hoje, com essa palavra. A graça da oração. Se Deus me fala, eu respondo. Uma pessoa que ama, responde à pessoa amada. E o quarto passo, a contemplação, que transpassa o teu coração e, e torna o teu dia todo diferente. E essa palavra deve ficar ruminando no nosso coração ao longo de todo o dia. E o último passo, a resolução. Qual a decisão que eu tomo face a essa palavra? Na escuta do verbo. Hi everyone, welcome to this Thursday, August 12, when we come together to pray sacred scripture. I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth from Seas of the Word Community, and I would like to welcome all of you that are joining us today. For the readings of today for our liturgy, we will start the reading of the book of Joshua. So Joshua chapter 3, verses, uh, verse 7 to 11, then we go to verse 13 to 17. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 114, 114, and the Gospel from St. Matthew, chapter 18, verse 21, until chapter 19, verse 1. We can start the reading of the Word of God, so you can grab your Bible and we can start it. A reading from the book of Joshua. Early in the morning, Joshua rose and set out with all the Israelites, and they came to the Jordan. They encamped there before crossing. Then the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will, begin, I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all the Israel, so that they may know that I will be with you as I was with Moses. You are the one who shall command the priests to bear the Ark of the Covenant. When you come to the, to the edge of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Joshua then said to the Israelites, Draw near and hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua said, By this you shall know that among you is the living God, who without fail will drive out from before you the Canaanites. The ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is going to pass before you in the Jordan. When the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, rests in the waters of the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan, flowing from above, shall be cut off. They shall stand in a single heap. When the people set out from their tents to cross over the Jordan, the priests bearing the ark of the covenant were in front of the people. Now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of harvest. So when, those who were, so when those who were bore the ark had come to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests bearing the ark were dipped in the edge of the water, the waters flowing from above stood still, rising up in a single heap far off at Adam, the city that is beside Zarethan, while, while those flowing toward the sea of the Arab, The Dead Sea were wholly, were wholly cut off. Then the people crossed over oppos opposite Jericho, 
while all Israel were cross crossing over on dry ground, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yesterday, we ended the book of uh, Deuteronomy, seeing Moses' death, and to see for the first time this name Joshua, mentioning that he was going to be the leader of the people of Israel from, from Moses' death on. And here we see the first action. It's chapter 3, but we see the first big action, the first big move that Joshua makes with the people of Israel, crossing the Jordan, crossing the river Jordan. And it is beautiful that the Lord says, I have chosen you. I will be with you as I was with my servant Moses. God, first of all, assured Joshua of his presence. We can imagine how frightening it would be to, to guide the people of Israel after Moses. Moses that was his faithful servant for so many years, they endured so many things. Joshua was one of his closest, but it is different to be uh, near the pastor, the shepherd, the leader, than to become one. That's very different. And we see here the first God assured Joshua his presence, his love, and gave him his word saying, tell to the people of Israel what I am going to do. I will defeat the Canaanites. In a, a previous chapters, what we saw, previous days in the chapters of Deuteronomy, we saw that God asked the people to conquer the land, but they were afraid, saying, no, they are too strong, they are too tall, they are too big for us. They have those uh, strong walls and cities, we will never be able to overcome it. But just a few, Joshua and Caleb with others said, no, we are able to do that, we are able. But the people were afraid. And now we see Jesus, God, um, God is making this new leader go to the people of Israel and say, I will do this for you. It won't be you who will be fighting. I will be fighting against the other nations for you. So we can see that our Lord is close to us. Our Lord and God is a God very close to us. He never leaves us alone. And if he asks us to do something, he will do that for us. If the Lord is asking you to conquer something that is bigger than what you can, or at least you think that this is uh, bigger than your strength, than what you can do, believe in Him. Believe in Him. I have to do that. Believe in Him. Believe that He will be the one driving out the nations. He will be the one cutting off waters of the rivers and oceans. He will be the one opening up a path for you and for me. And when it says that the people cross in dry land, as we heard in, in, in Exodus, and we are hearing this now, it means the people are safe. They were crossing in dry land. It means they were safe. God was with them. God was with them. And God is with us. Never forget that. There's a matter what is your promised land that you're going to conquer now? Does not matter the challenges that you are facing right now in your life? That does not matter. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. The responsorial psalm says, When Israel went out from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel his dominion. The sea looked and fled, Jordan turned back. The mountains skipped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why is it, O sea, that you flee, O Jordan, that you turn back? O mountains, that you skip like rams, O hills like lambs. In the presence of our Lord and Savior, mountains, seas, animals, rivers, they all revere our Lord and God. They all step back. They all put in this, place themselves play in, the, in this 
worshiping position in the in the promise that the Lord has made for you and his dreams for you nothing nothing will stop you because it is God's will and there is in the gospel from St. Matthew chapter 18 verse 21 until chapter 19 verse 1 says Peter came to Jesus and said Lord if your brother or sister sins against me, how often would I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to Peter, No, seven times, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began to reckon, one who owned him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owned him a hundred denarii, and seized him by the throat, and said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and plead him, and plead with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into the prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then, the, then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you plead with me. Should not you have, have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will do will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. When Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went to the region of Judea beyond the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Peter comes with a question, and a question that we ask many times. How many times should I forgive my brother or sister? How many times should I forgive my husband, my wife, my mom, my dad, my siblings, people that I work with, people in the church, my friends. For how many times should I forgive people that do wrong against me? Especially those sins that are recurring sins. You are just People are hurting you over and over and over again in the same way. We are always hurted, but sometimes it's in different ways, right? So, um, it's not in the same the same way, but there are people they're always hurt in us in the exactly same way and we get tired of it and Peter comes with a very good and sincere question Lord, how many times should I forgive? He didn't know and he went to the one who was going to give him the perfect answer but Peter does not only come with a question, but he comes with an answer. That's Peter Peter is always this one that is not only bringing question or situations, but he comes with his own answer that sometimes are not quite right. And the Lord needs to teach him, to teach him to adjust his answer to be in God's plan. So he says, for how many times? As many as seven times. And why number seven? Because in the Bible says that the just sins seven times a day. So what does that mean? Peter is saying, Lord, how many times should I forgive? Seven times? It means, so if the just sins seven times, so should I forgive seven times? Because my, my, brother, my, my brother or sister, he is just, she is just. So every time that she forgive in the seven times uh, window that she has or he has, so should I forgive him for that? So, making it sim simpler. So, should I forgive my brother or sister only if he's just? 
if he is a sinner, and I know that if a just man will sin seven times, a sinner who forget it will sin all the time. We cannot not even count. And Jesus said, actually, no. You should forgive 70 times seven. It means a lot. Don't count. Don't count. Forgive your brothers and sisters who sin against you any time. Any, any, any given time. Lord is teaching us to have a heart of forgiveness, to forgive our brothers and sisters. And then he tells us this parable. The slave that owed his Lord a huge amount of money that he would never, he could never pay. And because he's, he pleaded with his Lord, he asked forgiveness. He asked time, actually. He only asked time to pay it. But his Lord knew that it would be impossible for him to pay. His Lord forgave the debt. The next second, he saw this fellow slave that owed him a small amount. Amount that he could pay with a day wage of work. And he said, give me a time and I will pay you. What did he do? This servant that received a huge mercy. The servant received a forgiveness of a huge debt. So he was blessed with huge mercy. He wasn't able to give even a little mercy to his fellow slave. He wasn't able to give the same mercy that he received. So what is the lesson that we can learn today? First, understand that we all will sin against each other. And the first and the only thing that matters is forgiveness. Is forgiveness from the bottom of our hearts. To forgive others is not repentant. The other person cannot even be repented. But I have to forgive from the bottom of my heart. Because we received huge mercy and we need to give at least a little mercy. The Lord, God, He forgives our sins. He forgives all of our debts against Him. He gives us eternal life. He gave, he gave us Jesus. So we should forgive and we should uh, have mercy on our brothers and sisters. So maybe you have today someone to forgive a situation that it is very hard for you. Do not forget that you are the first one that received mercy. And you have the, the, the duty to give mercy. We all, we all received mercy. And we need to give mercy to our brothers and sisters. And also today, August 12th, is the day of St. Jane Francis of Chantal. Jane, St. Jane Francis Frimoit was born in Dijon, France in 1572. She and her husband had six children. In 1601, her husband died in an accident. After overcoming her depression, Jane Francis sought the spiritual dimension of her suffering with her spiritual advisor, Francis de Sale, Saint Francis de Sale, that was her bishop. She founded the Congregation of the Visitation for women who wished to live a religious life but could not endure the austerity of the existing religious order. Committed to working with the sick and the poor, she died in 1641, having established about 85 monasteries. So today we celebrate the saint that she was married, she became a widow, and she founded the community of visitation. But first she found spiritual guidance in St. Francis de Sales. This great saint that we have in our church, this great bishop of the people of Dijon. So the Lord gives us great saints with examples of forgiveness, with examples of lives given to the Lord. So let's ask their intercession to pray for us and to help us to forgive and to be the leaders the Lord wants us to be. And 
to end our time together, I would like to leave you with a quote from Saint Jane Frances de Chantal. In prayer, more is accomplished by listening than by talking. And may the Lord bless us. Amen.